feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. And to God be all the glory. It's been glorious, glorious 60 days of glory 2020. And I'm excited that this is 60 days of glory extended. Abel Damina is my name. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. It is with that mandate that we are bringing all of these messages to you on the various platforms all over the world, especially right here on social media. I want to welcome every one of you, friends and family, and everybody that has been a consistent part of this ministry right here on social media. You must tell people about it. Do me the favor you've always done as a partaker, a co-laborer with me in the advancement of God's kingdom and bringing light through the gospel into the hearts of men by sharing the videos right now. You know, as many groups are as on your Facebook page, share it to those groups, create watch parties. Let's flood the entire Blue Marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. You never can tell who is praying sincerely for the truth of the gospel that you're sharing will connect that person with these truths that are revealed right here on the platform. Let me also use the opportunity to mention that if you're following and you don't belong to any local church where Christ is revealed, you want to be a part of a local family. The word of God says, God says the solitary in families. God wants you to be in a local church where you are accountable, where you are being taught, and where you also are able to serve the body of Christ with your giftings and callings and be a blessing to the body. And if there's no such a body in your area or community or in your nation, all you need to do today is shoot a mail to me, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we will try to make sure that we connect you with brethren in your area who are part of our church campus in that location so you can get the word of God, be fed the word of God, and grow in the knowledge of Christ. Let me also mention those of you who would like to get copies of my new books. They are books you don't want to miss having. One of them is The Last Days. is a book on eschatology that deals with all the myths on 666, Antichrist, you know, great tribulation and all that around the last days. The son of perdition, false prophets, false teachers is a whole eschatology material with sound exegesis. The last days. All right. There's another one I released on the office of the pastor is a material that equips you to become an effective tool in the hand of Christ for building disciples and building believers in the knowledge of Christ and effectively serving as a pastor over a local church. You know, once you start overseeing two, three, four, five people, that's already a church where two or three are gathered. That's what makes a church. So once you're already growing to where you're beginning to disciple people, you need to read this book on the office of the pastor so you can serve the people of God no matter how many they are effectively. That book is a good book. The third one I release is the Bible truth about material wealth. There's usually a clash between material wealth and the gospel. So this is sound exegesis on what Christ taught, the apostles taught, the New Testament theology where material wealth is concerned and how to use material wealth, you know, in serving Christ and honoring Christ. Then there's the material I also release is a free material and that book is on eternal salvation in Christ. It deals with all the scriptures that throw doubts on salvation being eternal or salvation being forever. All those scriptures in the Bible, including the famous Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4, sound exegesis. But the exciting thing is that this particular book is free. We're giving it free, both in hard copy from our office and online. We have an online edition. Lastly, I want to mention that every day we're going to have the 60 days of glory extended twice a day. 12 noon GMT plus one and 10 p.m. GMT plus one. Let me also mention that in October, we're going to bring back to you Riot and the Counselor. Tell everybody about this extended version of the 60 Days of Glory. I'm looking forward to being a blessing to you today as we serve you the grace of God. Fasting your seatbelt as I take you on a gospel adventure into the service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. Eternal life. Only Jesus can give it. I come to Jesus for eternal life. 
I don't come to him for other things that I can get elsewhere. I come to him for what only he supplies. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He that has the son has life. So why are we in Christ? For life. Abel Domino Ministries International presents Righteous Invasion of Truth. Riot live with Dr. Abel Domino. Somebody shut up! The curse, curses, cursing, and the concept of deliverance. And ask the counselor with Dr. Abel Domino and Michael Bush. Date 11th October to 15th November 2020. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. GMT plus one. Sunday 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. services GMT plus one. You can also join the broadcast on Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. daily. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. daily. And Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. Watch this program live on Kingdom Life Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV. Also visit Abel Damino Facebook handle, Instagram handle, Twitter handle, and YouTube. Host Doctors Abel and Rachel Damino. We are still looking at the legality and the vitality of salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 verse number 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. Take note of that verse. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. We're going to look at the events that preceded the birth of Jesus. The events that preceded the birth of Jesus because we are working on, you know, the legality and the vitality of salvation. In the synoptics, and when we say the synoptics, we mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the synoptics, what events preceded the incarnation of Jesus? John the Baptist, who is the last prophet, was the person who preceded the birth of Jesus as a prophet. He was the last prophet, and he was a prophet, actually, who was in the prophetic ministry before Jesus was born. There was no change in the pattern. Okay, so how do you identify John? Let's go through the history of this. Matthew chapter 11 verse number 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you will receive it, this is Elias which was for to come. This is Elijah which was for to come. So Jesus called John the Baptist Elijah. Elijah to come. Look at Matthew chapter 17 verse 10. And his disciples asked him saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias or Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the son of man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. The Jews knew that someday somebody will come before the Christ. From the scriptures of course from what they read. The issue is they didn't know he had come. Jesus told them it was John. Where did Jesus see that John was that Elias? He saw it in the scriptures. Which scriptures? Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. I will send a messenger who shall prepare the way before me. 
Look at Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 to 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a cause. All right? Now, so Jesus said that Elijah is John. Now, in the synoptics, you will see a drama. And I want us to follow this drama. It's interesting. Luke chapter 1. And before we read, that drama is a man called Zacharias. Who saw an angel and the angel told him, Elizabeth shall bear a son. And you shall call his name John. Luke chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So what did the angel come to do? What did the angel come to do? I'd like you to think about that. Then secondly, who said Elijah will come? Malachi. Malachi was a prophet who prophesied the coming of Elijah. And now by explanation, that Elijah was John the Baptist. How did Malachi speak? Malachi spoke as a prophet. He spoke as a prophet. All right? No prophecy, remember, of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's what Brother Peter said. Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So that statement came by the power of God through Malachi. That statement came by the power of God through Malachi. What the angel did was to hearken to the voice of God's word. When the fullness of time came, that angel just came to voice it out. That's all the angel did. The angel just came to voice out what was in the scripture. Because the angel didn't have the power to do what the word said. Because this is Malachi. When Malachi spoke the word... Malachi was not the one. Those words were words spoken of God. So those words did not lack power. Remember Zechariah and Elizabeth. They cooperated with God's power and they received. They cooperated with God's power which is in God's word which is contained in the scriptures of the prophets. You didn't hear that. Elizabeth and Zechariah cooperated with God's word and God's power and God's power is in the scriptures of the prophets. All Zechariah and Elizabeth did was to cooperate and receive. Question, where was that power of God? The power of God is in what the prophets had said. Now, did he require ability to perform it? I mean the angel. No, the angel did not require ability to perform the words. What did it require? The words. It required only human cooperation and human's reception. Have you seen that when it came to John, it was also according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Which scriptures? Malachi. Malachi prophesied concerning John. So the reason John was born that way was not because of John. He was born in the prophetic way in which he was born because of Christ. The reason for the messenger was to herald the coming of Christ. How? According to the scriptures. Alright, so he was heralding the coming of Christ. I'm talking about John the Baptist now. According to the scripture. Now look at what John said of himself. John chapter 1 verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. A man sent from God by the mouth of who was this man sent? By the mouth of Malachi the prophet as contained in the scriptures. So even when John was saying there was a man sent from God whose name was John, it's not as if he had a prophecy from somewhere. 
It was from his study of the scriptures he saw that Malachi spoke concerning his mission and concerning his assignment. Just like Jesus opened the book and found where it was written in the book. That's the same way John the Baptist also found where the prophet prophesied and he knew that because the prophet had spoken and it was contained in the scriptures, it will surely come to pass. Look at verse 7 of John chapter 1. Pay attention. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Look at the question that they asked. John chapter 1 verse 23. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah. He was quoting from Isaiah 40 verse 3. And Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. That's where he quoted that verse from. Isaiah 40 verse 3. And Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. He said mine is to show you. Why will you show us? Because it has been spoken. So because it has been spoken of me. And my assignment has been declared in the prophecy. I have found out that I have a mission sent. To point to him. To point to the truth. That is the mission of John. Now from that drama. What did Elizabeth do? Elizabeth believed. She took the words spoken from the scriptures. You know, that angel that spoke to Elizabeth did nothing. He only spoke what was in the scriptures. So he didn't do anything. Angels have no power of their own. Angels are messengers of the power of God. Angels have no power of their own. Angels are messengers of the power of God. So therefore, they have no power to take, you know, decisions on anything. And the power is in what God said. The power is in what God said. Alright, so all angels do is to hear what God said as written in the scriptures and excel in strength proclaiming it. The strength they excel in is in the strength of the word of God. Angels don't have strength on their own. That is why when believers are filled with God's word and they begin to speak the word of God, they generate an activity of angels because angels excel when the word of God is spoken. The moment Satan fell, he lost his power as an angel. Angels only function according to the word of God. Angels only function according to the word of God. We don't send angels as believers. We speak the word of God. And when we speak the word of God, angels excel when they hear the word and they go into action. Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength. How? That do his commandments. They do his commandments. They don't do your instructions. They do his commandments. How? By hearkening unto the voice of his word. They hearken unto the voice of his word. So I take the word of God from the scriptures. I put it in my mouth. And I give voice to the word. When I give voice to the word, angels will hear the word from my mouth that is written and excel. Because in hearing the word, the power of God contained in those words energizes the angels for action. They excel in strength, hearkening to the voice. Now the word of God is given voice to by the believer. And when angels hear the scriptures... The scriptures have potency and ability in themselves to cause the angels to excel. That is, their muscles go into activity and they are empowered and energized to carry out the will of God as contained within the confines of the scriptures. So in this instance, the angel just rehearsed and said the scriptures. The things we read there are not mere words. 
They are words that carry power. The things we read in the scriptures are not mere words. They are words that carry power. So as that angel reminded Zechariah, who should know, Zechariah should have said, Oh God, that is it. But let's look at Mary. People believe that Mary said, I miss my period. And the angel said, don't worry. No, that's not what happened. Who did the angel come to? He came to a virgin exposed to a man. Thou shalt conceive. It's not automatic. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shall call his name Jesus. The same thing the angel said to Zechariah. In Luke chapter 1 verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. So the angel now is quoting the scriptures. Look at verse 32 of Luke chapter 1. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Look at verse 34 of the same chapter. Then said Mary unto the angel. How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. It didn't happen to Mary just because God said. Mary was required to accept what God said so that God's power can go into operation because God forces nothing on anybody. He allows men to accept or reject. He does not manipulate. He does not intimidate. He allows men to be willing. Now look at verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And the angel answered and said, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. It's funny how the King James you know, robs us of certain things because of limitation in language. You think that the angel was preaching to Mary. No, the angel wasn't preaching. Better or better translations will put it like this. The angel said to Mary, no word of God shall be void of power. That's what he said. It was not with God. Not No, 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 it's weak. No word of God. He was emphatically telling her, no word of God shall be void of power. That is to say, the ability to bring the word of God to pass is inside the world. The ability to bring it to pass is contained in the world. The angels were referring to what the scriptures have said. So question, what did the scriptures say that gave the angels the audacity to tell Mary, no word of God shall be void of power. Look at what the angel said. They quoted from Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So already, whether Mary being pregnant was already written. The power to get her pregnant was already in the scriptures. So all the angels were to do was to announce. And once Mary accepts, those scriptures goes into operation. The moment she accepts. Look at another prophecy. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace. There shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. And to establish with judgment and with justice. From henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. No word of God. Which word? Spoken by the prophets. No word of God shall be void of power. Which word? The word spoken by the prophets. Written in the scriptures. Spoken by the prophets. Now listen. It was spoken so that it will be written. And it was written so that the goalpost never changes. It was spoken so that it will be written. No word of God spoken by the prophets is void of power. God did not release power by the angel. God released power 
when he spoke it by the prophets. God released power when he spoke those words by the prophets. Look at Mary's answer. I love the word of God. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel disappeared. So the angel didn't play any part, only to announce. And once she received it, Kabayana, the angel left her with the word to go. The word knows what to do. The word knows what to do. And we, of course, we know that the word became flesh. Now, so please pay attention. According to God's word, written in the scriptures, at that point she said, be it unto me according to thy word. She conceived. Instanta. She, that's why it's called incarnation. The miracle happened. Every time a man receives the scriptures by faith, the power of the scriptures are received. God's word carries power. The minute he spoke it by the prophets, the power was in the words that God said. And that power was in the word to bring it to pass from the incarnation. Remember, we saw that the word put Jesus on the cross. We saw that Jesus, by the word, went to the grave. And we saw that Jesus, by the word, rose from the dead. So now, we are seeing that Jesus, by the word, was conceived. Jesus, by the word, was born. So it's not like God was doing new, new things. Uh -uh. In the prophecy, the power to actualize the events was contained in those words. So it was just to find the word, believe the word, and it is done. Matthew 1, 20 to 22. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, that son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord, not by the angel, by the prophet, which was spoken by the Lord, not by the angel, but by the prophets, by the prophets. So the angel did not originate anything. Neither did the prophet originate anything. So question, where did the power, where did it come from? It came from God. The power came from God. The power of God comes with the word of God. The power of God is in the word of God. The power to do what God says is in the word of God. So, the same thing at the incarnation of Jesus. The power of God overshadowed Mary. The incarnation. He said the power of God will overshadow you. That is why I keep saying... Mary actually didn't give birth to Jesus. It was not a birth. Because Mary's blood was not used. Mary's eggs were not used. There was no sperm involved. Mary was a sinner. So her blood didn't touch Jesus. Jesus was sinless. So all Jesus did was to use Mary like a surrogate mother and come out. There was no interference between Mary and Jesus other than he sat inside her like a container. And at the right time, he exited. That's why the Bible says he was born not of flesh nor of blood, but of the will of man. And that is why you don't worship Mary just because she carried Jesus. That's not enough for you to worship her. She too had to be born again. If Mary never got born again, she would have gone to hell. That's why on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 1, Mary was with them in Solomon's porch waiting for the baptism of the Holy Ghost because she too had to believe. That is why a time came when Mary was thinking too much of herself. Jesus told her, woman, stop, 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 stop. I must be about my father's business and you don't know what that father is. He put the record straight for her. And you know, some Christians feel like, well, you know, Mary must be very special. She carried Jesus for nine months. What about me? He lives in me forever. Her own was nine months. Me, I am his temple forever. He said, I will abide. I will live in you forever. So nine months and forever, which one? 
So if you are worshipping Mary, you should be worshipping me too. Because I am carrying Jesus forever. He lives in me. I live in him. We can never be separated. Oh, glory to God. That's why I'm taking time to make you see that what made the issue happen was not because it was Mary or an angel. It was God's power contained in the prophecy of the prophets in the Old Testament. Contained in the prophecy of the prophets in the Old Testament. When it comes to the kingdom of God, Jesus has equalized all of us. No Jew, no Greek. Nobody is superior. Nobody is inferior. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus brings all of us. You know, he equalizes all of us. In Christ, all of us are one and all of us are the same. Now, let me proceed in what I'm dealing with here now. It was spoken by the mouth of the prophets. God had said, when this woman hears the scripture and receives it, the power of God will come upon her. And the angel told her that's what was going to happen. What the prophet spoke was the word of God, which did not lack power. Remember, things happen according to the protocol of scriptures. Things happen according to the protocol of scriptures. There had to be the, you know, the voice of one to cry in the wilderness. John had to come first because things happened in sequence. John was the last of the prophets. And Jesus was not to be revealed until John comes out and prophesies. So all the prophets prophesied until John. So things happened in accordance with the scriptures. The angel did not put Jesus into Mary. I repeat. The angel did not put Jesus into Mary. It was the word that God spoke. The word that God spoke in the scriptures that had the ability. The angel pointed Mary's attention to it. She said, be it unto me according to your word. Which word? Not the word of the angel, but the word of the scripture spoken by the prophets that the angels gave voice to, to Mary. We understand the incarnation. When he said we should enter his rest, he saw those that did not enter. They didn't enter because they didn't mix faith. They didn't mix faith with what they heard. The word of God, they didn't mix faith with it. So the rest of God is not Saturday. The rest of God is God's word. The word of God is the rest of God. His word is his rest. His word is his rest. Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. 45. Then opened ye their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. So what was he pointing their attention to? That whatever he was doing was in fulfillment of the scriptures. God spoke his word. God came into humanity. Became a man. And his word came to pass. Look at Jesus on the cross. He began to quote Psalm 22. When he identified with man, he went to hell. He said, you will not leave your holy one see corruption. Or you will not abandon me in hell. You will not allow me or suffer me see corruption. You will not leave me in hell. Where did Jesus hear those words? He heard it through a prophet. So that means God spoke through a prophet. That he will not leave him in hell. Jesus therefore put the same words. He took the words of the prophets put those words in his mouth, spoke those words, and those words quickened his body, and he rose from the dead. So God did not have to go to hell to raise Jesus. That is why, listen carefully, you will see that in Jesus' resurrection, nobody prayed for him to rise. Nobody. Nobody prayed for Jesus to rise from the dead. Unlike Lazarus, there's a difference between the resurrection of Jesus 
and the resurrection of Lazarus. You know, Jesus said to Lazarus, Lazarus, comfort. Elijah raised somebody from the dead. Paul raised somebody. They prayed and laid hands and the person came back to life. In the case of Jesus, his resurrection was according to the scriptures. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures because he came to fulfill the scriptures how did he do it he put the scriptures in his mouth and from the garden of eden to the cross he put the scriptures in his mouth that means the scriptures do not lack power of fulfillment now I know when I said from the garden of Eden he put the scriptures in his mouth you'll be wondering where in the garden of Eden after the fall of man the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent that was the prophecy of Jesus so from that prophecy Jesus took those words it is written of me I will bruise the head of the serpent he spoke those prophecies he spoke those words and those words they are not void of power as he was speaking them the power of God went into operation and caused the scriptures to be fulfilled. Jesus said, you know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. Mark 12, 24. And Jesus answering said unto them, do you not therefore err? Because you know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. You know not the scriptures, nor the power of God. Second Timothy 3.16 All scriptures are given by inspiration of God and are profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. Inspiration means breath. That the scriptures were breathed on by God. That is the scriptures are God breath. No prophecy of scripture is of any private origin. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, they were not the words of men. They were the words spoken from the heart of God. They were words spoken from the very heart of God. Those words came from the very heart of God. Now, Jesus took those words, spoke them in Hades. And came up from the dead. It was God that raised him too. Because the words were powered by God. And Jesus when he took those words and spoke them. God by his power in those words raised him up. But he also was the one who spoke them. So he raised himself up. God never entered hell to bring Jesus out. Jesus went to hell with God's powered word in him. And on the third day, he spoke the words and the power of God in the words he spoke brought him out of the dead. Someone said, but the Bible talk about the Holy Ghost. Now you cannot separate God and his word. And you are trying to say there is the power of God and the word of God. Uh, you can't separate them. The word of God is God's power. God's power is God's word. Is it clear? The word of God is God's power. God's power is God's word. You can't separate them. Meaning, God can say something and be saying what's going to happen. Now, God's word has the inherent ability to bring to pass what God says. God's word has the inherent ability to bring to pass what God says. Look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 3. And God said, light be. That's the way it is in the original Hebrew. Light be light was. <laughs> That's the way he did it. King James says, let there be light. As if God was taking permission from somebody. No, the original says, and God said, light be light was. He just called it light and light responded. Okay, That's the way it is in the original. Now, we have seen that that statement was speaking symbolically to Moses about salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 to 6. 
in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Now, let's see this. So when Jesus entered into hell, he was there, spiritually dead. Why? Did he commit sin? No. So why? Because he was made sin. And because he was made sin on our behalf, God placed the judgment of humanity on him. Could he speak the scriptures? Yes. Did he know the scriptures? Yes. Did he forget the scriptures? No. He said, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He wasn't saying, you have my spirit in your hands. Mm -mm. That's not what he was saying. What you are saying is, I commit my spirit into the scriptures. I commit my spirit into the scriptures. Why? He died according to the scriptures. He was buried according to the scriptures. He rose according to the scriptures. So when he says, into your hands I commit my spirit. What you are saying is, into the hands of the scriptures, I commit my spirit. So the scriptures must be fulfilled. And Jesus said it cannot be broken. Scriptures cannot be broken. Now, if anybody in hell that day had spoken of the scriptures, he would have come out. Boom. He would have come out. Anyone. Because the authority of Satan had been broken. The minute Jesus hung on the cross, Satan was no more in charge. For example, if you look at the rich man, you know the story of the rich man. What we have seen from the story of the rich man is a disobedient spirit will never change. Mm -mm. A disobedient spirit will never change, not even in hell. Not even in hell. Suffering cannot make a disobedient spirit change. Do you know that when the Bible says, that people in hell are gnashing their teeth. They are not gnashing their teeth because the fire is hot or because they are suffering. They are still gnashing their teeth in anger. They are still rebelling against God. They have no regrets. Mm -mm. Because a man goes to hell deliberately. He sees the gospel. He rejects the gospel. And he goes into hell. That rebellion and that anger against the gospel is what he keeps expressing. That he is suffering in hell doesn't change his resolve. Mm -mm. So the anger. I mean look at the rich man. The problem is not the suffering. It is the fact that he has refused to receive the love of God. A man in hell has refused to receive the love of God. Just like the rich man. He, look at what the rich man was saying. Send somebody to go and tell them about this place. He didn't say send somebody. To go and tell them about the love of God. Uh -uh. The rich man's issue was not the gospel. He didn't care about the gospel. What he was saying is warn them not to come because of the suffering here. Not because he regrets being there. Just to still rebel. Just to still rebel. And Abraham said they have the law and the prophets. He insisted let somebody go and tell them. Meaning nothing changed about the rich man. His rebellion to the word of God on earth was still manifesting even in hell. But do you know, those who were saved came out with Jesus. You know why? Through faith. <laughs> Through faith. They believed. They obtained a good report in Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Seeing the things from afar, they had believed it. And Jesus came in to fulfill what they had believed. So they just cashed in. Nothing changed. 
what they believed from Abel to the last person in Hebrews 11 was the word that God said. What got Jesus out of the grave was that same word that God said. So from Moses to Joseph to Abraham was what God said. So don't look at the Bible as a mere book. The things said here were inspired of God according to God's redemptive plan. Inspired of God according to God's redemptive plan. How Christ will suffer for our sins. According to the scriptures. How he will be buried. According to the scriptures. How he rose the third day. According to the scriptures. See, they carry the very power of God. If any man will receive those words, he will be saved. So, the power of God is in the scriptures. You didn't hear that. The power of God is in the scriptures. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down. He purged our sins. He sat down. Did you observe? When he had by himself. When he had by himself purged. He himself sat down on the right hand. Of majesty. Do you know that Jesus did it himself? And it was in fulfillment of what God has said. Now, let's look at the ministry of the Holy Ghost for a bit. John 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart... I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now look at me everybody. He says, because I go away. The going away was death, burial, and resurrection. Then he now says, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will reprove. The word reprove means he will convince. Three things. Sin, because the world believe not on me. Righteousness, I go, you see me no more. Judgment, because the prince of this world is judge. Now look at verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. Three things we read there are concerning Jesus. Sin, righteousness, judgment. The three of them are concerning Jesus. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all the truth. That's the way it is in the original. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it to you. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So, the word sin, John used there, is a word in the Greek that implies something that is corporate or something that is common to all of us. Like a generational thing. Apparently, John's reference was the nature of sin. When Jesus said, he will reprove the world of sin. Why? Because they believe not on me. 
believe not on me as what? Believe not on me as the one who takes away the sin of the world. So the Holy Ghost will point us to the fact that Jesus has taken away the sin of the world. He will also point us to the fact that Jesus is our right standing with God. He will also point us to the fact that Satan is judged. That is the Holy Ghost message. Jesus. The message of the Holy Ghost and the focus of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Jesus. So when Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, the Holy Ghost will point you to Jesus. He will point you to the person of Jesus. He will point you to the gospel. How that Jesus died, how that Jesus was buried, and how that Jesus was raised from the dead the third day. So it's in those three events that we see Jesus as our sin, as our righteousness, as the judgment of the prince of this world. Because that punishment was death. So why did Jesus go to hell? He went to hell to pay the price of man's sin, which was spiritual death. Remember, the wages of sin is death. So those two things, number one, spiritual death. Number two, those who were spiritually dead went to hell. So Jesus went to hell. Three days. Three days in hell, Jesus brought the whole of eternity. Eternity past, eternity future, and compressed it in three days. That is why out of three days, he gave us eternal life. Out of three days, he gave us eternal redemption. Out of three days, he gave us eternal inheritance. So the three days was all of eternity compressed in three days. All of eternity compressed in three days. So when Jesus rose from the dead, he had paid the price for man's eternal sins once. He paid that price once and for all. And today, 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of God. Jesus is the Christ. Is different from Jesus Christ. They are not the same. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the man. Yes. That Jesus is the man. That man is the savior of man. Is born of God. Hmm. Whosoever believeth not Jesus Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Now who is the Christ? Christ will suffer. Christ will die. Christ will be buried. And Christ will rise. Whosoever believe it, that Jesus is the man. Christ will carry the sins of the world. Christ will be our righteousness. And Christ will be the judgment of the devil. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Glory to God whosoever. And that's why the spirit of the Antichrist rejects the humanity of Jesus or the deity of Jesus. Any teaching, any teaching that says Jesus is not a man, that teaching is Antichrist. And any teaching that says Jesus is not God, that teaching is Antichrist. So Antichrist is not a person. Antichrist is a teaching that denies the humanity and the deity of Jesus. That teaching is what John the Revelator in his revelation saw as symbolic 666. 666 is not a number. 
is a mode of communicating that Antichrist is a teaching. And that's why John said, Antichrist is even with us now. So Antichrist was with them 2,000 years ago. And it is still here now. It's a teaching. Stop waiting for a man. It is a teaching that denies the humanity of Jesus or the deity of Jesus. I have a six hour teaching on that. The Bible truth about the Antichrist. Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you in this service. Glory to God. And Father, we pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. Revelation knowledge is granted your people today. Veils fall off. Clarity comes. Holy Ghost. I ask that the revelation of Jesus is teared up in the hearts of men. It grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. Barriers broken. Revelation like never before. Receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for great grace that is upon this house and upon your people today. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Welcome back. Uh, it's uh, very exciting to be back here. Of course, you know that. Papa is here with me. I'll show you in a moment. First, let me take you to South Africa, where my newest Facebook friend, <laughs> Ala 30 Days of Glory, Lerato Mofoke, joins me. Uh, Lerato is actually in the Blue Fountain, that's in Free State, South Africa. And um, Lerato is not a good person. Lerato <laughs> says, dear Mr. Bush, you know, he, 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 he spoils me with uh, commendations, says a number of things, and then says, dear Mr. Bush, when you get on air today, please pinch Dr. Abel Damini beat so that we can confirm he's truly a human being. <laughs> and I said to him, I said to him, Lerato, I would try to do that, but would you think the Holy Spirit would not hold that against me? <laughs> and he said, no, not at all, sir, but even if it does, you're on your own. <laughs> Lerato, uh, well, fear wouldn't even let me pinch, Papa. But Lerato, I get, I get the sense, I get the sense. You know, if you just watching on TV, on Facebook Live, or listening on radio, feel like that, imagine me sitting right here. Papa joins me. It's so exciting. Christian is happy. Everyone, every Christian, Everywhere in the world is happy, and they all joined me, Michael Bush, to welcome Dr. Abel Damina. Mr. Bush, fantastic! What a to see. blessing to be with fantastic, you again and fellowship here. Fantastic! Papa. Praise God in um, the UK. Yes. So we we'll start there from as we set sail. Thank you, Mr. Bush, for the wonderful work you're doing, and great uh, thanks to Papa for real. He has cleared the confusion. Uh, that's uh, always veiled religion in me. My name is Sonny Mwaebiem. I'm in the UK. In Papa's teaching, he said that when Jesus rose, that he forbade Mary not to touch him because he was yet to go to the Father. Thereafter, Christ proceeded to heaven to present himself. And later, Papa said that heaven is not a location, that Jesus did not go to heaven, but that he proceeded to the heart of believers. I'm confused. Can Papa... Make some clarification, please. Yeah, you know, when Jesus, when Jesus rose from the dead, Mary wanted to hold him. He told her, hold me not back. It's not like, don't touch me. It was like, hold me not back. She was trying to hold him back because she was happy to see him. Remember, she was looking for him. And then finally she was saying, please, if, if she thought Jesus was the gardener and she was saying, if you're the one who took him, show me. And then he called her and then she sh shouted Rabboni and she grabbed him and he said, hold me not back. I've not yet ascended to my father. Your father, my God, your God. Now, that day, he appeared before the father. And he came back the same day. All right, he came back and then began to teach the disciples. But of course, from that day, when believers receive him, he comes into them to live in them by the Holy Spirit. So the believer becomes Jesus' heaven. Remember, we said two days ago or yesterday, wherever Jesus is, is where heaven is. So today, Jesus lives in the believer. He said, I and my father will come into you and make our abode with you and I will never leave nor forsake you. So he's in you and he lives in you forever. 
Staying on in, in, uh, in the UK, Warrington, that's where we're going to next. And Chinolo has written to us. Uh, first, though, let me just take up Papa on something he said during the teaching earlier. And that was um, Papa just teaching along the line. He just broke away from the spiritual and got into the physical. I mentioned um, Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood. How yes. do you know that? Well, I watch their films. Oh, you do? Ah. Oh, Papa, you too. <laughs> I watch Nollywood. I watch Bollywood. I watch Hollywood. I thought it was on Holy to do that. No, why? It's Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Papa, let's stay on in the UK. Warrington, Chinelu writes from Warrington in the United Kingdom, says, um, I want to thank God for using you, Papa, to save souls. Glory. I appreciate your teachings so much. God bless you for us. Here is my question, Daddy. I'm in love with a man who said he's no longer with his wife. But the bride price has not been returned, and they have three kids together. He now says he wants to marry me, but I'm worried. I don't want trouble from his wife because as far as I'm concerned, he's still married. Please, Papa, I need your advice on what to do. Should I go ahead and marry him or wait till he's done with his wife? Papa, I think some of these questions you can just give me the permission to answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, what is this, Papa? <laughs> Papa, what is this one? She knows the answer. Yes. Go and do likewise. <laughs> Go and do likewise. <laughs> Papa, what is this one? <laughs> Papa, that's the answer, right? Yes, the answer oh, is right. You have done the right thing. He knows the answer. Uh, you know, Papa, I'm tapping small, small. Yes, right. Go and do likewise. I can answer this one. <laughs> so when this one, just ship the answers to me. I know what to do. Okay. So we, we're still staying on in Europe. Let's go to Italy, where Festus Ngozi writes, says, Papa, I, I want to thank you so much for bringing me out of darkness into the light of Christ by preaching the word. I pray no power can stand against you because they are under your feet. Papa, please, I'm facing some challenges with my documents. I need your prayers. All right. In any name? Yes, Festus. Gossip. Festus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for you today. You have favor, and by the favor of God at work on your behalf, we command circumstances and situations to work, work out, you know, circumstances and situations to work in your favor and cause the relevant authorities to release your documents and Amen. release your papers. Amen. We declare it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Still from Italy, um, Casey Cole writes, Thank you, Daddy, for an opportunity like this. My question is from 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 3 to 20. King Saul inquired from a medium by, you know, asked the woman to bring up Prophet Samuel, a dead man, and she did. Sir, was that really Samuel or was it magic? And if it was Samuel, how powerful was the medium and who gave us such powers? No, that was not Samuel. That was actually necromancy. It was like a divination, sorcery, witchcraft. It was not Samuel at all. It was just satanic manipulation. Okay, so Germany, from Italy to Germany, we're still in Europe. And um, I'm tender from Germany. Papa, I thank you for the counseling concerning my marriage. I also would like to thank you for the revelational knowledge that enlightens our Christian life. The word is easier to share and communicate. I have two questions, Papa. Please enlighten us over Matthew 24, 7, Joel 2, 1 to 2, Malachi 4, 1 to 2, and 3, 10. Papa, are you going to know all of that? Well, let, let's start with the first one. Matthew 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine. Just uh, signs of the end times. That's what it is. All of those are signs of the end times. And remember, the end times started back in Bible days. The end time started from the day Jesus rose from the dead. And all of these things have happened. Earthquakes, pestilences, nation against nation. And they are still happening. There are things that happen within human activities. The next one. Okay, the next one is Joel 2, 1 to 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion, son, and land my holy. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Next verse. A day of darkness, of gloominess, of, you know, and all of that. There's the army that will rise. Okay, so it's just talking about, you know, what, what God is doing. It was a prophecy of Joel concerning the people that God will raise that will shine the light in the midst of darkness. Malachi 4, 1 to 2. Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, all the proud here and all that do we can, it shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, I shall leave neither root nor branch. Next verse. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. It's just talking about, you know, uh, in the midst of darkness, you know, the light of the gospel will shine. That's what it's talking about. Okay, and finally, uh, Malachi 3.10. Malachi 3.10. Bring you all the tides into the stars that there may be meat in my house. This is the monster scripture. 
I'm proving now here with said the Lord of us, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Well, I know this has to do with tithe, but like I've always explained, that scripture is not for the New Testament. It's not for the believer in Christ. It was for people under the law. And that scripture was not even to human, to, to people. It was to priests. The priests that were receiving tithe and were not paying tithe of tithe. They're the ones he was talking to in Malachi chapter 3. If you read verse 1, 2, and 3, the, the pretext, you will see that that's what he was talking about. Ebel Tender is a very grateful papa for your answers, but he has a tricky question, even as he rounds off from Germany. Papa, what would you love to correct, subtract from, or add to the doctrine or teaching of Bishop David Oyerepo? Well, I don't know his doctrine, so I don't know what to put or what not to put. I don't really know what it is. I mind my own. <laughs> to Russia next, <laughs> Papa. So, Papa, you two are also no, very no, good no. politician. No, it's no, not politics. That's a good answer. No, no, no. It's not. I cannot. Papa, it's a good answer. I, I cannot use. speak for somebody yes. who I have not sat down with to ask him what is your doctrine. I cannot. That would be uncharitable. Okay. All that I know is what I've heard here and there. Okay. I don't have, I've not collected it from him yes. to say this is it. So, I can't okay. really. Yeah. And this program is not about correcting. Exactly. We just correct the what you know, people misconceptions of God's word. That's what we're after. Okay, to Russia now as we prepare to leave Europe. And um, Dr. Damina and Mr. Bush, I thank God for Papa's life and the labor to bring the truth to God's people. Did Jesus bring a kingdom to us? We are citizens of heaven. I listened to you last Sunday, but the other side of it, preached by Dr. Miles Munro. Well, I also wouldn't want to comment on Dr. Miles Munro because Miles Munro is not here. So it won't look like I'm just saying it because he's not around. So let's leave Miles Munro, who was my very good friend. He's been to this city. He's been to my home. We've been to his home. We were very good friends with Miles. So I understand what you're talking about, yeah. Miles Munro. But the point is simply this. What Jesus brought to us was his kingdom. And his kingdom is his reality in the heart of men. When Jesus entered your heart, the kingdom has entered. Jesus is the embodiment of the kingdom. However, what people have preached over the years is that the church will have to take over all the industries. Let me be honest with you. It will never happen. Christians will, it will, that day will never come when Christians will take over all the political powers in the world, all the businesses. The world does not belong to Christians alone. And God doesn't love Christians. He loves the world. So whatever he has put on the earth, he put it there for all of us. The money is for both Christians and non-Christians. The jobs are for Christians and non-Christians. Everything is for all of us. God loves man. God doesn't love the church. He loves all of us. So that day will never come. However, the believer in Christ who has received the kingdom of God in his, in his heart has the ability to go into the secular and preach the gospel and shine the light of the gospel wherever he is. Okay, Phil Steele from Moscow, Russia continues. Papa, Paul said, I became everything to every, everyone. First Corinthians 9.22. In soul winning, does it hold? Please throw more light on it. Well, everything to every man just means I am, I am, I'm willing to make sacrifices if I have to, to be able to preach to people. If I'm going to a place where there is, um, where there's no civilization to preach and everybody is naked in that place. And we have such a place in Nigeria, by the way, where people are naked. Mm. They are not wearing clothes mm. in Nigeria today. Absolutely. Now, if I'm going there, I will have to make up my mind that when I get there, I'm going to take off my clothes and preach to them. That is becoming all men for the purpose of preaching to them. So that's what Paul was talking about. Faith is in levels or different kinds of faith. As First um, Corinthians chapter 12 talks about gifts of the Spirit. Faith is a gift. Some have it more than others. No, 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 no. That's not what he was talking about. Faith is not in level. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. Once Jesus enters your heart, all of faith is inside you. Now, but remember, the gift of faith is a, 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 a gift of the Spirit. It's a charis. It's not yours. The Holy Ghost gives you that gift when there is the need to carry out a ministerial function that demands the gift of faith. There's a gift of wisdom. There's a gift of knowledge. Those are gifts of the Spirit for the purpose of ministry when the needs arrive. And the Bible says the Spirit gives the gifts as He wills. That's different mm -hmm. from the faith that you have in Christ Jesus, which came by the teaching of the gospel, where you can stand up and say, I'm believing for this and I'm standing in faith for this to happen. That's different from the gift of faith. Phil continues with the books of Ecclesiastes and Songs of Solomon written also with Christ as shadows. Yes, of course. 
Ecclesiastes songs of Solomon was written, you know, for a, a revelation of Christ. Solomon is, you know, talking to all those beautiful women and using a lot of poetic words to talk. He's just exemplifying the love between Christ and the church. So they are all written concerning. Jesus didn't talk about marrying many wives, but there is a doctrine going on about it. What do you say about it? Well, we stay with the word of God. When he created them male and female, and the, the first mother we have is Adam and Eve, not Adam, Eve, and Susanna. Okay, how do we mourn with brethren when they lose loved ones? You know, since we can't quote Job anymore, God gives and takes. How do we mourn? Bible says we sorrow, but we do not sorrow like the world. We sorrow, but we do not sorrow hopelessly. We do not sorrow like the world. In our sorrowing, we comfort ourselves with the word of God. That's what Brother Paul said. Wherefore, comfort ye yourselves with these words. To be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. When the reality of Christ is, is much in you, even if somebody dies or somebody departs, you will sorrow because you feel the absence, but it will not be hopeless sorrow. Okay, out of uh, Europe now, and we're heading straight to the Americas, Canada, here we come. Fabrice Kevin has always been on the show. He writes from Canada, says, Papa, I heard you say after the rapture, that will be the end. That means there won't be tribulation, am I right? Tribulation is ongoing right now. Tribulation is ongoing. Okay, Rachel P. Kupara um, writes, I cannot express the gratitude and the derelious joy that I'm experiencing as the result of your teaching and unveiling of the truths about our Father in the unveiling of Christ. Thank you, Papa, for the bank quit. You have been settling, setting before us every day. Thank you for precision of your word in him that is sharper than a two-edged sword, pierced even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the center of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We are consistently and constantly met at our point of need. Papa, the risk of coming across like a carnal man, can you tell me what is in the sepulcher of the prophets of the Old Testament scattered around Jerusalem and Israel when we know at resurrection this man rose with Christ? Nothing is there. Nothing. Just empty. Okay, so Rachel says, uh, <laughs> thank you for your resolute commitment to the service of Christ. Thank you for pointing me to the best location of rest and peace. Okay. That's right, Papa. Okay. Praise God. So we Praise take this God. one. Yeah. Please, how do I get your complete teaching on heaven? I need answers to questions. For instance, is there anything like making heaven? Is the believer in heaven already? Please, I really need the materials, sir. Kindly direct me on what to do. Well, Shalom. If you get our teaching on the father and his family, the father and his family is a, is a series I taught. It will help you a lot with such, with such answers. The father and his family. It will help you a lot. Okay, so um, next on the program, Pastor David St. Paul says, Greetings from my wife, Minister Favor. We love you so, so dearly, Papa. Dear Papa Abel Damina, Daddy, I want to especially thank you for making yourself available for this gospel, the revelation of Christ to the world. Mr. Michael Bush is a blessing. You are inspiring. Your presence on this program this year has made a great difference and a new realm. Thank you for making yourself available to support our Father, Daddy. One of your teachings carries over 20 different messages. I mean, from just one of your teachings in one service, a pastor can draw over 20 different teachings. This is powerful, Papa. You are so full of deep revelation, great insight of God's word. We are blessed to have you in our generation. God has raised you in this generation for impact, to give us direction, for boldness, to declare God's word with authority. Most of us never had boldness to declare this message in the little way we understood it, but you have helped us to create clear pictures and put words to our thoughts and knowledge. We are very excited. You have influenced our ministry and family. You are a source of inspiration to us. That you are blessed with supernatural strength. May our Father, may our God continue to strengthen you and keep you for us. We pray for grace for you to see us grow in this revelation that brings impact to the nations of the earth. Amen. We love you so much, Papa. Pastor David St. Paul. Thank you, Pastor Davidson. Bless you. Okay, so from there, from Canada, let's run now next to South Africa, Cape Town. There is where we land for the series. I'm enjoying every minute of it. The word is coming with perfect clarity. Grace to you, sirs, for a wonderful job. May I have some light on the following? A few days ago, you taught that angels receive energy or power from the word of God. So they speak what word has already been spoken. How is it then that the law is referred to as the word spoken by angels if the law is not of God? Thank you. Linom Goma, Cape Town, South Africa. 
well, again, it's, it's, it, you, need, you need a lot of teaching to be able to come to an understanding of how that the angels receive instructions by the word of God and how that they spoke words. The angels spoke words of the law and under that every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Remember, angels were created to serve man. And so when they were serving under Moses, what they powered was what Moses gave as laws. But when Jesus showed up, the angels are to worship the son. Look at it in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. And let all the angels of God worship Jesus the man. So today, the angels hearken to the voice of the new covenant, what Christ has done, and his finished work. Okay, Simon Seretse Moima writes from South Africa. There is a different part of the country. Limpopo in Modimode. And um, he, Simon says, uh, Papa, my question is based on Galatians. Chapter 6, verses 6 to 9, on verses 7 and 9 in particular. Verse 7, be not deceived, God is not more, so whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Papa, does this mean that we receive from God based on what we do? I'm asking for clarity, please. No, he's just talking about, you know, ministering to people who's, who, he's talking about ministering to men of God, who minister to you in spiritual things. In that Galatians, he's first of all said, let him that is taught communicate with his teacher in all good things. Then he now says, you know, he that sow to the flesh shall reap corruption and all that. And he says, let us do good to all men. And then he talks about the reward. What he's talking about is that when you give, the reward you get is when what you give for is carried out. If you give for crusade, when we go and preach the crusade, that's your reward. Your reward is in seeing that what you give for is carried out. And listen, when you give for the work of God and souls are saved, you have a reward with Jesus for bringing the gospel to people who needed it. So it's not talking about God waiting for us. It's talking about service. It's talking about service in the house of God, not salvation. They are two different things. Still from South Africa, writes in Kustinati. How are you, Mr. Bush, and you, Daddy, too? I have a few questions. Chris, who created Satan and how? Or like we've explained, Satan is a creation of man. The fall of man was the rise of Satan. God never created Satan. Okay. Papa Steel from Kusinati, from South Africa. Why was Jesus tempted after the 40 days and nights of fasting? Well, again, like I've been explaining, Luke and Matthew's account of that fasting was a summary of all the temptations that Jesus went through while on earth. It's just a summary. Theologians call it the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. It's just a summary. All right, it just summarizes everything. That's what it is. Papa, who did Moses want to see in Exodus 33, 18, when he said, show me thy glory? He wanted to see the incarnation. And God told him, no, you can't see it because there's a sequence, there's a protocol by which things happen. Galatians 4, 4 to 6, when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. So Moses wanted to see incarnation ahead of time. And God told him, no, it's not for now. Ngosina, I think we'll come back to you in South Africa any moment now, right now. Another caller. Hello. I'm uh, Mr. Emmanuel from Cotton Bennett. Okay. I'm quite well said. Okay. Those the things you have taken them to expose the word of God in you. Well, I want to be sure of anything I do from that expose. I want I have some crucial questions to ask me. Number one question is. Uh, is it good for people to be giving a faithful harvest, second fruit harvest, and annual harvest? That is number one. Number two, the way you are teaching, I am to amend. Are you from this country? If you are from this country, which local government, please, or which state? Thank you. I am from a quiet bomb. It will look out. Government. But you should now be from Uranina. <laughs> the, the things you are doing, Papa, no two man can do it. It's only one man can do it. <laughs> Somebody told me at the studio the other day, you took me. Yes, he said, You are an Eket man. The way you speak, only Eket <laughs> I'm going to fire you. I'm going to fire you. How can he do that? Okay, All we right, should so, just answer his question. So, yeah, uh, is it good to give first fruit? First of all, first fruit is Jesus. Jesus is our first fruit. Because first fruit talks about the resurrection. It's not about money or food stuff that we give in church. However, it is a good thing to give your pastor things. Give your pastor money. Support your pastor. If there's a pastor's day, give him an offering on that day to appreciate what he is doing. And if he's in need and you have the ability, support your pastor. 
but let first fruit not be used to manipulate you. First fruit is about what Jesus did in his resurrection. And when we got born again, the Bible says we are the first fruits of what he did for us. Another caller. Hello. No. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Where you're calling from? Yes. My name is Mohamed Keda from Germany. Germany. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Bush. You are doing fantastic work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hello, Papa. Yeah, bless you. Bless you. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, I want to ask you a question. Okay. If it's somebody dies, so you continue praying for the person, it's God answer that prayer. Now, after some... I'm after... concerned. Okay, okay. What is mean of fear of the Lord is Psalm 128. Okay. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. All right, thank you. First one, when people die, it's useless to pray for them. Because once somebody is dead, that his chapter is closed. All those prayers are a waste of time. So, Papa, what about being so rest in peace? No, all that is a waste of time. Oh, my. If his soul never rested in peace while he was still alive, it is too late. Once a man dies, it's over. All those prayers are just a waste of time. You know, even in burial, praying for the dead is a waste of time. Just open the ground, put him there, pray for the family. That's what matters. The family and the people he has left behind. The guy is no more in that body. <laughs> he left long ago. So your prayer is useless. Now, the, uh, the other question is, what's the meaning of the fear of the Lord? In the Old Testament, people were asked to fear the Lord. In the New Testament, we are not asked to fear the Lord. We are asked to reverence the Lord. There's a difference between reverence and fear. Bible says there is no fear in love. All right? There is no fear in love. You're in the love of God. No fear. However, we reverence God. We honor him for what he has done for us. Let's go back to South Africa. Kusinati has been waiting. Papa, what was that back part that Moses saw? The back part that Moses saw is the types and the shadows and all of those, you know, um, yeah. Who was Moses talking to face to face at Exodus 33, 11? Who was Moses? Moses and God never spoke face to face. So it was just a communication because nobody saw God. John 1, 18, Jesus, you know, John says, no man has seen God at any time. And Jesus speaking in John chapter 5, he says, you have never heard his voice nor seen his shape. You've never. So Jesus is the first appearance of God on earth. However, Moses spoke to God through, you know, mediums and different forms of communication. Okay. Greetings, my father and Mr. Bush. I'm Tapiwa Makoni. I'm a Zimbabwean. I'm based in Pretoria, South Africa. One, how can I effectively communicate the truth of the gospel to workmates and business associates without disturbing the professional relationship? Well, you have to be tactful about it, wise about it. You can just call them out for dinner, call them out for breakfast and just tell them, today we're not discussing business, gentlemen. Let's talk about spiritual things. Those of you interested, you can come and hang out with me. Let's have lunch. Let's have breakfast. Let's have dinner. And while you're eating with them, you start talking about spiritual realities. That's one of the ways to do it. So you must be able to differentiate between business and, you know, when you want to preach the gospel. Let them know. Don't mix it. You know, put the two of them aside. Business, business, gospel, gospel. Okay, he continues. Can you please explain to me First Corinthians chapter 15, 29, where Paul kind of used the concept of the baptism of the dead as a defense of the reality of resurrection? First Corinthians 15, 29. 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Now, to be able to get that context, you have to start from verse 20 to 29 and thereafter. So give me from verse 25 for time. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 27. For he had put all things under his feet. 28. And when all things shall be subdued. 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all. 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? 31. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. 32. And if after the manner of men are fought, Okay, so Brother Paul was just commenting on a tradition that was among them in the, in the church at Corinth. That's all he was commenting on. They used to have a tradition like that called the baptizing of the dead. Or, you know, it's a cultural thing. 
Marcy Ghana, here we are. Thank you, sir, for allowing yourself to be used by God to bring life to us. My question, our spirits and souls are saved by Christ Jesus. Why didn't did God leave out the salvation of our character? No, the, your soul is where your character is. Your soul is where your character is. And it's part of what we call the fruit of the spirit. So as you keep looking at Jesus, the fruit of the spirit in you begins to find expression. So your character is also... So Prosper, who is in Kumasi, Ghana, now concludes. So finally, we go to Cameroon. I told you I spent 20 years in Cameroon. You said so. And this is Vicky from Bamenda. Bamenda used to be Northwest Province. I don't know why it's still there because, you know, they have changed how they used to say those things. Papa, I really thank the Lord for you. Some of my sisters heard about you in a negative way. I convinced them to start watching Kellen. And right now, they are, they are like, wow. The eyes of their understanding have enlightened and they are rejoicing in the Lord. Secondly, yesterday, I was discussing with someone, a magistrate, and I asked, I asked him if he had heard of Dr. Abel Damien. I said no. Then I forwarded to Terra 7, day 18, to him. This was his response. Wow, wow, wow. Glory to God Almighty. So, so inspiring. Please always bless me with such through my other WhatsApp number. Papa, souls are being blessed every day by you. That comes from Vicky in Bamenda. Come wow. Papa. Vicky, bless yeah. you and thank you. Keep doing a good job. We just must go now. We're told we have a minute. Papa, I'd like to thank everyone. Uh, in the 30 days of uh, glory, is to, so is it still 30 days, 60 days now? Yes, okay. 60 days. <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Jake, thank you. <laughs> studio cameramen, studio hands, sound engineers, everyone working with us. And Dami, yes, I always forget Dami. Yes. And everyone here working with us. This is Michael Bush asking Papa to take us home. Hey, guys, what a blessing to be with you. Get more people to hook up. We look forward to having wonderful times with you as we continue to study the word of his grace. We bless you and we love you. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Eternal life. Only Jesus can give it. I come to Jesus for eternal life. I don't come to him for other things that I can get elsewhere. I come to him for what only he supplies. I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He that has the son has life. So why are we in Christ for life? Abel Damino Ministries International presents Righteous Invasion of Truth, Riot, live with Dr. Abel Damino. Somebody shut up! The curse, curses, cursing, and the concept of deliverance. And Ask the Counselor with Dr. Abel Damino and Michael Bush. Date 11th October to 15th November 2020. Time Mondays to Saturdays 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. GMT plus one. Sunday 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. services GMT plus one. You can also join the broadcast on Comfort FM 95.1 Uyo 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. daily. XL FM 106.9 Uyo 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. daily. Inspiration FM 105.9 Uyo from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. daily. And Radio Aquaibo 90.5 Uyo 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. Watch this program live on Kingdom Life Network TV on your strong decoder or my TV. Also visit Abel Damino Facebook handle, Instagram handle, Twitter handle and YouTube. Host Drs. Abel and Rachel Damino. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I know you have been blessed. It's been an exciting time of teaching, answering questions, and bringing clarity to you where the word of God and the doctrine of Christ is concerned. And I'm excited that you are also going to help me spread the news, get more people to hook up to this 60 days of glory extended so they can be built up, edified, and they can grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're following and you don't belong to any local church where Christ is revealed, you want to be a part of a local family. The word of God says, God says the solitary in families. God wants you to be in a local church where you are accountable, where you are being taught, and where you also are able to serve the body of Christ with your giftings and callings and be a blessing to the body. And if there's no such a body in your area or community or in your nation, all you need to do today is shoot a mail to me, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we will try to make sure 
that we connect you with brethren in your area who are part of our church campus in that location so you can get the word of God, be fed the word of God, and grow in the knowledge of Christ. Let me also mention, those of you who would like to get copies of my new books, they are books you don't want to miss having. One of them is The Last Days. is a book on eschatology that deals with all the myths on 666, Antichrist, you know, Great Tribulation, and all that around the last days. The Son of Perdition, False Prophets, False Teachers, is a whole eschatology material with sound exegesis. The last days, all right? There's another one I released on the office of the pastor. It's a material that equips you to become an effective tool in the hand of Christ for building disciples and building believers in the knowledge of Christ and effectively serving as a pastor over a local church. You know, once you start overseeing two, three, four, five people, that's already a church where two or three are gathered. That's what makes a church. So once you're already growing to where you're beginning to disciple people, you need to read this book on the office of the pastor so you can serve the people of God no matter how many they are effectively. That book is a good book. The third one I release is the Bible truth about material wealth. There's usually a clash between material wealth and the gospel. So this is sound exegesis on what Christ taught, the apostles taught, the New Testament theology where material wealth is concerned and how to use material wealth, you know, in serving Christ and honoring Christ. Then there's the material I also released is a free material. And that book is on eternal salvation in Christ. It deals with all the scriptures that throw doubts on salvation being eternal or salvation being forever. All those scriptures in the Bible, including the famous Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4, sound exegesis. But the exciting thing is that this particular book is free. We're giving it free, both in hard copy from our office and online. We have an online edition. I want to pray for you. I decree and I declare that you are bound in knowledge. You are bound in grace. The eyes of your understanding being flooded with light. That you grow and grow into the fullness of God. And above all, that the revelation of Jesus grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke sickness and disease. We command sick bodies be healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You don't want to miss the next broadcast coming up at 10 p.m. GMT plus one as we continue with the 60 days of glory extended questions, answers, and the teaching of God's word. We love you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Amen.